Mark Rober has squirrels. I have ants. Ants, uh, they go after the black soldier fly larva uh, bin. They go after the beehives. Uh, they, they go after the chicken coop. They go after the red wiggler worms. They go after everything. And so it's, this is the way that I found that it's just flawless and it's simple. It's not poisonous. It's just, you know, it's a, a second bin filled with water with some bricks in it. That's all it takes to stop my arch nemesis, the ants. So this is where I think, okay, use the tractor to move the bee house, but uh, have the bee house when it is set down uh, standing on unistrut metal or square tubing, something that's strong enough to hold all that weight, but also easy enough that I can 3D print or mold with concrete uh, for using maybe oils like lard or something like that. Uh, definitely water for sure. And then have one actually up on the pole, like what you see on Etsy or Amazon, and then down uh, actually molded uh, with the concrete. Okay, so just thinking out loud, spitballing, easier and quicker to do this in video than to write a bunch of stuff. So take the auger, go uh, dig some holes, and then take the 3D printer and print some cones, big giant cones that go in the deep holes dug by the auger with the tractor. So they're on weld on T-bar or Unistrut. Uh, just got the electrical right there, NEMA 650. So just run the welder. Using a T-bar or Unistrut, I like to do Unistrut. Uh, that way it's also adjustable. And then I can sit there and uh, level the bee house. Question is, what kind of pin would even hold it? Would it be strong enough? Because it's a lot of weight uh, that could cause the metal to shear off. Uh, still installing this, still bolting it in, doing the electrical. I'm actually working on the electrical for this right now. And uh, this will run the pneumatic tools for building and cutting the wood and all that kind of stuff for the Slovenian bee house. So that's kind of my theory on how I'm going to approach this. We'll see if it works or not. And then uh, when it's finished at the the micro factory concept, the workshop, uh, as normal people would call it, then sit there and use forks, slide in into a rail system underneath and drive it with the tractor. And uh, also just have the ability to, to be able to move around. Uh, so even if I wanna sit there and move, like uh, in that video, I, I tweeted uh, it's 24 hives in one Slovenian bee house. So it's like, okay, so 24 hives moved all at once, all contained. Uh, so that's another question to, to consider and, and for Carlos and I to, to try out is uh, then sitting there uh, working on a rail system that the tractor can move so it can just pick up and move the bee houses and then use the unistrut to stabilize them. So uh, that's, that's kind of it. I'll add a drawing at the end to try to explain better Kind of how i think this could go and then beyond that you've got you know water collection solar all that kind of stuff that's then beaming uh wi-fi live video uh back to the house with uh on vif cameras that's that's the only kind that i use they work great uh, i just use on vif cameras so these are ptz these are fixed pros and cons on each uh and then out the other side tape over the DC side I don't touch it but uh, I do sit there and use the PoE so uh, you sit there and just make your own uh, Ethernet cables and drop them in there and clamp down on it and boom now you're set so that's that's how I see this playing out in the very beginning and then yeah kind of the more advanced stuff is trying to watch in the hives live trying to sit there and watch per the frames different ways but the trick is for me to get a sun max, which I cannot get a hold of, and then use the sun max to power these. So I take uh, 12 volt car batteries, I put them in series, so then I get uh, a series circuit, so I get 24 volts. Uh, while this, if you put them in parallel, uh, the voltage would be 12 volts, but then you get higher uh, amp hours. So that is where I'm going with this. And then the beehives, they're out by themselves, collecting their own water, harvesting their own you know, sunlight for electricity. And then a lot of monitoring can be done uh, remotely as well as hands-on for, you know, quote-unquote scanning 
the frames and then just uh, sitting there, you know, doing it with like maybe a computer monitor and a Raspberry Pi or an ideally maybe an iPad that I carry around. That way I don't have to like just leave equipment, you know, that only gets used like once a week. Uh, instead, I just the main one can be maybe just an iPad that's kind of running the show and that just travels with me and feeds back across um, the the local area network, the the big giant Wi-Fi network, uh, to local on-site servers. Langstroth is cool. Um, it's, it's, some people really love it. Uh, I think I'm gonna love a Slovenia and B house a lot more. So uh, this is one of the feeders I use, got to clean out and get it ready to go again. And um, this is the ventilation right there. Uh, this is where the bees come up. They're on the other side of the screen and they sit there and uh, climb down and get water and sugar when there's like, when it's low on water or low on pollen, uh, then I can augment. So this works really well. Uh, this is my favorite design. So far, this is my favorite design, by the way. I've already got Z-Wave moved around, so I actually get to control these uh, from the servers uh, in a completely separate building. And then these uh, also relay to other buildings. So yeah, Z-Wave makes it really simple for me to grab base measurements initially. For the long range stuff, like, you know, this uh, Slovenian uh, bee house, uh, probably back to ESP home. I, I think that's probably going to be the way to go or Raspberry Pi kind of doing like an ESP home thing, but also like camera for video, a couple of different ways to consider it. So two main reasons that I went for this Dymo uh, Label Writer 450 Twin Turbo. Uh, this is kind of how I use it. This, since it's got two, it's also easy to bang on with Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is, I make stickers for the frames and I make stickers for the hives. So these are the big stickers. These are the skinny stickers. So little skinny stickers are kind of like this. And so it works out pretty good. A lot of ways to improve it, but the goal is to then as bottles of honey come out and those are getting scanned too, then I can sit there and track each and every single bottle all the way back to the frames that are in the hives that are in the Slovenian bee houses. So that's, that's where it's at. So it's like this, you know, it could be one year uh, of work that then comes out the other end with just a, a little QR code uh, that's printed out and added to that particular bottle. So bottle number, you know, one, two, three, uh, you can see that it came from frames four, five, six in hive seven, eight, nine from uh, B house 10. That's, that's the goal. This is very hard. Bundled it up, uh, on site locally with the servers and then, uh, beam it out across Starlink to you guys. And then that's where y'all get to like sit there and, you know, interact with, uh, the ranch, you know, watch, watch like the bees, the chickens, stuff like that. Um, so I'm still working on the software for that and uh you know trying to keep low latency live video with you know live statistics it's it's a uh, is a noble effort uh so i've made some notes about that too but that, that's what i'm doing so what works for me may not work for others but this is just what i'm into